Hello, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to Conan Exiles. Hail Crom, barbarians. Yes, well, I've just started out on this game, and I'm having a whale of a time. I'm going through, and there's no villager left and massacred, as far as I'm concerned, especially if you start getting up through some of the weapons. The particular area I am at the moment is the Dregs, and it's one of the first sort of major dungeons you get to as you're starting out in the game. There's a bit of a knack to it, and I'll discuss it in this video coming up now as I do a full walkthrough of the Dregs dungeon. Who doesn't enjoy a little bit of dungeon creeping, hey? Well, the Dregs is located in D4, and it's in that dark area, quite hilly area, just past a small village. Now, going up and down that particular coastline can be a little bit fractious, should we say, for the beginning player. As you progress up through the levels, it becomes a bit less so. But it can still be a challenge if you're caught unaware or your equipment has degraded. So it's worthwhile taking a look at your equipment. You're going to need a bow. You're going to need some arrows. Uh, make sure any armor you've got has been fully maintained. And it's got good durability. Because where you're going, you don't want to be caught around with, say, your boots rotting. And you just stood there in your bare feet or a loincloth. You want a little bit of protection. So in addition to that, you're going to need your main weapon. You're going to need a bit of food, you're going to need some wraps, you're going to need some potion as well. And also, I would say you would need a butchery knife. And for that, that will become apparent later on when you want to get the skin to build some of the reptilian armour. So welcome back to swords, sandals, sorcery and possibly axes. This is the dregs walkthrough. I've got all the way through, I've still kept a couple of villagers alive because as we get into the main temple of this particular area we have to do a blood sacrifice and that's easier said than done especially if you've got overzealous thralls who are killing people either way I think I'm in good shape there's still one hanging on to grim life there with my thrall probably because I've equipped my thrall with a bludgeon now, if you approach this circle in the centre of the main structure, you'll see some ghosts, and the ghosts are performing a ritual. This ritual is, well, to be fair, it's a bloodthirsty ritual. They're doing a sacrifice, and to sacrifice somebody on that particular area, that's what you need to do to um, open the door. So, you need to get somebody up here and give them a good chopping. So, with all the stragglers now defeated, I've left my thrall actually inside the structure which is perhaps the best way of doing it and then i have tempted um a villager to come up the steps there he is a defari armorer makes no difference we don't discriminate there you go he's dead and we've made a sacrifice we're going to get our thrall to follow us there we go and we're going to head down the steps now what have i got equipment wise well quite simply i have got Quite a bit of equipment. This equipment is just medium armor. What I, I'm dealing with here, but I have got a pretty good axe. Approach this tablet, press E to interact, and you'll acquire some new knowledge, right? And also the dredger aspect of things. Over to this first pool here. At the bottom of this pool, you're going to find a chest that will contain some of the items you need to get through this dungeon if you are somewhat unprepared. That will be bones, stone. A bit of brick, some other items, some items that are worthwhile having, but they are gonna, you know, they are gonna impede your encumbrance if you get too overzealous by going after all the chests. Now we got these sort of like Kumo Dragon sort of affair things. Probably a good idea to dispatch those as quickly as you possibly can. Once you've done that, you can either give them a good um, skinning or a good hatcheting, depending on what you're after. I'm in the market of growing some material. Back at the old base, I'm going to put a sword back on my thrall. She's got a nice steel broad sword or, or two-handed sword. That's fine with her. And don't forget, there's a little tip here. If you've got a thrall with you on this mission, don't be afraid of using up their inventory slots as well to hold certain items. Whether that be bandages, whether that be food, or even additional heavy materials that you may have. It's all worthwhile handing off to your thrall follower. 
Now, in and over to the right, in this sort of like cave antechamber, you're going to find yet another wooden chest. So, up these little steps by here, there's your box. Again, you've got bones, some wood, a glass flask, it all depends what you're going to get. But typically, you're going to be finding some bone uh, and some other items that you're going to need to ensure that you've got the item to survive and progress this dungeon. Some of the items that you are going to need are going to be a bow and arrow that will come um, relevant a little bit later on also some potion some healing potion and some wraps heading towards this fire up by the main steps we are going to be waylaid by these beasties all good for your experience mind you so we're going to get through all of those Chopping them up. All good stuff. Keep an eye on your stamina. Probably a not good idea to be around here with no stamina. Up these steps and dive into the pool. Down here you're going to find yet another chest. And in here will be some more items as I've mentioned. Stone, and a bone, perhaps some arrows. We've been lucky. Now, moving on. And we're going to head towards the main doors and get our dungeon. Dungeoning on. That's what we're going to do. Dungeon the dungeon. So, a lot of these beasts are now dispatched. As we get in and we start approaching this door, you'll see on the floor loads of stone and loads of branches. Good for making arrows, that. Now, approaching the door, you're going to see these ghosts, and these ghosts are going to be sort of glowing, sort of like a light whitey blue colour, because it's ethereal, isn't it? Press E, open the door, and follow through with your thrall. I have had it on some occasion that I've gone through this item and the door won't open. I just basically have to restart the game and then go back to where to where I was. For this part, you're going to need a bow and arrow. Now, if you've never used the bow and arrow before, you need to drag some arrows onto the bow to arm them and assign them as your ammunition. Head to this point, you'll see this round disc. And these are going to be all over this dungeon. Buy your arrow at the disc, disc moves in, like a sort of ancient mechanism. And if you look at these grates on either side, you'll see the water rise. Now, this will allow you enough purchase to get over the next level of ledge and head towards the door at the end. Look over to your left. Right, moving through. Great little area, this. Um, there's a box, a chest, on the right-hand side as you walk in. And there's some more items in there if you want to go and pick them up. But one of the best things in this entire section of the map is the glowing goop that allows you to make the blue glow stick torches. These torches last considerably longer, 20 minutes, as opposed to, I think, the three minutes the standard sort of like plant fibre torches last. And they glow with an eerie blue colour. Now you can see them here, you can either harvest them with your hands, or if you've got an appropriate tool, you can harvest them with that too. Pick that stuff up, take it away, and you will not want for light for a long, long time. And the stuff is, well, to be fair, the stuff is everywhere. Uh, it's all around these levels on the little sections as well. So it's worthwhile taking the time and picking up some of those blue plants, um, the glowing gloop, so you can make the glow stick torch. Now for that glow stick torch, you're going to need those materials, the glowing gloop, and some bone. Now this bone we found in the chests. So just be sure to pick the bone up. I think that's a top tip, that is. Just pick up the bone. Now, once you're ready, get to one end. On the left hand side, you will see another pillar to shoot with a disc inside. So here we are, waiting for the waters to rise so we can get ourselves over to the next level. If you go off to the right, where the broken pillar is, you can have a little look around, past the grates, and there's yet another box that can con contain a little bit more loot that you could want. Swim back as fast as you can. Get up onto the ledge. Ask your thrall to follow you. And move on to the next level. 
through the gate. Now, I find it quite important if you are using thralls on these particular dungeons, particularly if you're on at the lower levels, make sure they do follow you because, you know, if they don't, you're going to be left on your Jack Jones. And as a result of that, you could find yourself looking at the bedroll screen quickly. So pressing E against the door, getting your exile to follow you and moving on. Right, now, as you can see, no guess is what you've got to shoot here. Here, there are three circular discs to shoot to bring the levels up. One right into the middle. And if you jump down here and move off to the left, it will rise onto this ledge. Shoot the circle directly in front of you. Pow, water will rise in the trough in front of you. Swim all the way over to the right side. And you'll see another disc over this ledge, which will then bring the water level up in the antechamber that is just ahead of this section. So the water's going to rise again. Here we go. Floating up with it onto the ledge. Shoot the disc. Cool. There you go. Um, this water is going to rise as well. When it rises to a sufficient uh, height, you're going to jump in. Move to the center. There's the ledge. Straight up. Jump across. You might get lucky and make it, else you're going to have to wait. I've just got across. Got a front crawl. You might get lucky with your thrall coming across as well, but they may catch you up. And then in through the next section. Now the next section you're going to encounter skeletons. These skeletons can be a little bit of a pain. You can see them there lurking off in the darkness. They can be quite tough, especially for a new player. Um, blunt weapons probably best against them, even though I'm just using my axe. Sometimes you'll also get some inventory, some metal bar, that sort of thing. Now up here you're going to find three to four skeletons just round the corner. They're going to spawn, they're going to rush you as well. Be very careful that you don't run out of stamina. Um, that's going to be very bad because you're going to be less fight, left fighting three, at least three skeletons. Um, without any get up and go. Because you get up and go, has got up and gone. So there you go. Um, have a look around the bodies, a bit of glass here and there. Make sure you're not leaving any swag behind. Moving on to the next section. Moving through and down. It comes to another chamber. Now this is where the last chamber you're going to use your bow and arrow for. So you're going to go into the water. You're going to swim off to the left hand side. And there'll be a collapsed bit of rock. You're going to go up there. Now... There's a tunnel there, there no water's coming out of. That's where we need to go, so we've got to raise the water level. Out with the bow again, just aim just a little bit above where you want to shoot, and you should hit it. Get that bow and arrow put away, the water level rises. Get your companion to follow you, float on over, up onto the ledge. And now things are going to start to get a bit real because you're approaching the lair of the dungeon boss. For this, make sure your health is full. Got some potion ready so you can quick select it on your belt and move in to the main snake section or guardian section. So I'm moving some heal aloe healing wraps in there. It's good stuff. So as you move around the corner, there's going to be a chest on the left-hand side with a few items in it, I think major. But there's also going to be a skeleton, and they're just going to rush you. If you're not prepared, you're going to get rushed. Opening the box, see we've got a nice tidy sword, bit of stone, well, whatever. There's the skeleton giving me a bit of a base. Here comes my thrall in to sort him out. 
Here we go. That's the skeleton gone. No problem. What's he got? A little bit of iron bar. That'll do nicely. Never throw away iron bar. Quick sort out of your um, inventory. Look at any encumbrance. I'm kind of alright at the time being. Um, there's no point really getting rid of too much stuff. Let's move on. Right. There's the boss in all his snaky serpentine glory. And another skeleton that's come the other way. So we'll just quickly dispatch him. No inventory on him. And let's start to progress up towards the serpent. Now, they are going to start spitting out poison. So I run back and forth and the thrall will do a really good job as well to um, distract them. As soon as he goes under, he's going to sort of like flop out onto the chamber. That's your chance to give him a good thwack with the axe or with your daggers if you've got bleed on the daggers to do a little bit of damage. You see we took quite a bit off him then. We've still got some stamina left. We're going to hide down this one area here. Move back and forth. Dodging is um, poisonous spittle, which is what it is. Back and forth, back and forth. You can use some rolling, but that uses stamina as well. Moving up onto the main chamber, if you wanted to try and attack you as well, so you can give him a good belt. So as soon as he goes under, you know he's coming back out. I usually try and get to where the steps are. Out he comes, trying to flatten my thrall. There we go, we got a town with the axe now. Good old killing humdinger of sweeps there. We are really taking him down. One more pass, I think we've got him. Um, our thrall seems to have jumped into that poisonous pond where he's actually doing his thing. So we're going to recall the thrall. Don't want the thrall dying. Um, there you go. He's spitting all his poisonous stuff here, there and everywhere. There you go, he's still up. We're going to carry on running around. He's gone under. He's going to get it now. Oh yes, he is indeed. And he's out. So there you go. Go to town on him. Chop his head off. There you go, and he's dead. Now this is where you can either use the butchering knife, where you'll get some hide, which you can turn into armor, or you can start to butcher for meat. Now with that, you pick up all the meat. And if you'd use the buttery knife, like I say, you'll get some hide as well. Press E to interact with that and you'll get a lot of other items you can then craft. Abysmal swords, abysmal daggers. And then it's just time to make your way out of the dungeon, finally. Time to foxtrot Oscar, as they say. Head for those grates and, and then press E to return. And you can see all the different items I've collected and I, I've got abysmal fangs, I've got meat as well, which is great for restoring health and some other items as well, along with a small staff. Return to surface, and there you have it. And then it's time to go out and start doing some cooking of the abysmal meat, and also craft some of that lovely armour. I've been Ricardo, thanks for watching, see you soon.